this very generous invitation to speak at the National School of Drama is really wholly undeserved. Um, nevertheless, it has sparked a very unabashed self-indulgence, which I will put out to you. Technically, I was told one hour, but I think we've eaten into that one hour, but you'll have to tell me when to get off the stage, and you can be as rude as you want to. Um, so, calling my journey the confession of drama bars is perhaps not the substance of the keynote. Your plate over the next two days is so full of ponderous, pertinent problems that I can only step aside, spill out, and ramble along with my own Shobha Yatra. I will share with you my performative art practice, minus all those exhibitions and festivals and architectural installations, etc., etc., that the lady before me uh, was so kind to, to, to mention. I hope uh, this alternative path that I've chosen provides you the diversion uh, that might amuse you. Personally, I'm not completely convinced. In fact, I'm deeply skeptical about theater festivals, or more specifically about festivals that celebrate only theater, uh, whether it is curated or otherwise. I, as digital Indians, we have marginalized the Ram Leelas at the Shara, the Jatras during Durga Puja, the Khayals at cattle fairs, the Nautanki at Nochandi Nomaish, the Tamasha at Ganesh Utsavs, or the Therakuttu before any harvest, or the Bad Pathar at a Kashmiri wedding, or the Bhavai at Navratra, or a Gauri at Shiv Ratri. Now, these theatrical forms were not about religion alone. Ritual performances have built in social critique. But the tragedy is that creative spaces for live interface are constantly shrinking. And I'm not quite sure if festivals alone are enough to bring them back into the mainstream. Our childhood could breathe unpolluted air. It was quite unconscious of aesthetic boundaries slums and gated communities started to appear. The walls between arts and crafts, uh, caste and class hierarchies, or pendular debates, nitpicking between tolerance or intolerance, appeared starkly. As a child, one used to wake up to the mellifluous sound of an unamplified azan. I waited each year for the extravaganza of Ram Leelas, animating every nukkar with an annual fest of ritual drama. The serial play generating, sort of heralding the Dashera, in the nip of winter could have us satiated, devouring amateur histrionics and roasted peanuts. And sleepy-eyed, one would walk home way after midnight, knowing well what to expect the night after. Right under to the late 70s, one could count at least a dozen Ramdila Mandalis, representing different ethnic groups, later to be homogenized by the melting cauldron of Ramanan Sagar's TV soap opic and now only a few remain as political akharas. Darshanik jhankis, homemade installations on the drama of Krishna's birth, Janamashtami, as nascent exhibitions co-created by colony kids, as we did as children in our neighborhood, were about design and scenography, long, long before we learned 
what the words actually meant. I'd never heard the word sonography till one was coerced into registering it as a title of my practice, Rajiv City Sonographers Private Limited. Uh, the Basic Needs Pavilion I created for the German government at the Expo 2000 in Hanover required that my company be registered as a professional sonographer. It was a large, huge contract. And therefore, because also 50 countries I had to travel to pick up things, artists and performers and craftspeople, it had to be registered as sonographers. But the income tax department, the income tax department, the income tax department thought I was exporting manpower. They thought it was stenography. So the tax relief to me, to me as a designer, was challenged. The case had to go all the way to the Supreme Court before my lawyer, Karuna Nandi, could pay, sort of could prove the difference of the spelling. A sonography is not a stenographer. And, and it's about creating original content for India and deserves whatever concessions. Anyone who knows me from high school has been some idea of my edgy fascination and perhaps over the top design applications that came from the sense of the theatrical. I'm just so moved when I came in meeting Ram Gopalji and Telly, he told me about something I'd completely forgotten, which is the beginning with Shanta Gandhi at the Vigyan Bhavan for the Gyan Pete, where I danced when I was in better shape. And I had a set design, but this design and the and the clothing and whatever I was trying to do. And your wife was also dancing with me. So I completely forgotten about it. <laughs> but right up to my youth, I was prolific painter. I was basking in the, the thrill of capturing tactile narratives and the act of creating something with one's own hands for immediate effect. T totally a drama buzz. Uh, one was always inclined to explore the newest big idea. Impossible scenarios with mixed media peep shows made with old shoe boxes, stories painted on folding flaps, scotch, lap, scotch taped over cardboard mobile shrines like the Cavaliers. And I used to do cartoons, I used to do a lot of drawings then of how this television that has come in, come right from the top like an apple from the sky, how it's trying to link village to village, but actually it's only an urban phenomena, and how people must invent their own means of communication so as to be able to understand its weakness and its strength. So I always believe that you know communication is a physical condition that presupposes where you are and who you are. At that time, I remember a television set used to cost the same as what an irrigation well would, and I was not quite convinced that the television set is what we needed. Uh, and though we invented these peep shows, which went on to me trying to explore bigger ways, and I invented a bicycle with which all these scenes changed. So you could be sitting in a panchayat, or you could step out and go into the village square or into the government's office to tell about things that, uh, 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 impro how do we empower the local levels in the most relevant way? between people and those who govern them, between family and the community, between different communities, between age groups and the sexes, between equals and the not so equals. So this thing had, a, 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 it, puppets would pop out of it, hand-drawn pictures would come out of it, and I would make all this material with the villages where I was working. And this also had its own um, trajectory. Now, falling in love, with all creative applications, all the time, came naturally. One never felt slighted with the term jack of all. Converting our veranda or garden at home with anything and everything dramatic met the need to make and tell stories, invent transdisciplinary shows. That is what we called multimedia now. Uh, but 
you know this Vishnu Dharmotra Puran of being an architect, to be a dancer, to be a dancer, you have to be a sculptor, to be a sculptor, you need to know music and poetry, things got connected. This came alive to me by my mentors like Charles Eames, when they said everything connects. Of course, what we knew about this many, many hundreds of years before in India. But Narendra Sharma was instrumental. Uh, these disciplinary activities became de rigueur. Dance, particularly the thematic form of Uday Shankar's ballet taught by Narendra Sharma at our school, moved the sap. How could I become Rag Deepak while dancing the tale of dancing? Ramaji, I'm really delighted that you reminded me of this other thing I'd completely forgotten. I don't even remember what we were trying to say, but you remembered it was something about science and Galileo, and I don't know why I was dancing and how I was dancing, but it would be interesting to refresh my thinking of it if you find any material. Perhaps the skill of design appeared first as a device to communicate better, transmit order out of formless emotion. Please, friends, configuring my own entertainment. Self-education meant more than an academically acquired discipline, so I didn't want to come to the school. We did do, at al Qazi had all English-speaking people come for six months, and we did do a six-month stint, but I didn't want to get any degrees from art colleges or from design schools or from schools of drama. I think the, in India, the best universities are out in the streets themselves. So we did a lot of street play with Shanta Gandhi, which might feature here, I don't know. The mix of skill and drama, using both high-tech with cinema and low-tech with live action, close the gap between the senses, between the eye and the hand, between the mind and the heart and the spirit. It meant a rush and a high, and in those days of 60s, drugs were popular, but we never needed them. Uh, in the 90s, I was asked to do India's first discotheque. I couldn't find any pictures called The Cellar. And later on, uh, when I decided to paint, decorate, and dance my way through it, then a professional assignment was for asylum. Now these I have, maybe at another point, uh, if I give my more time, I would be able to put this together. Um, I would take my one-man show of paintings and any I recall, about 100 yards from here, was about poetry and about a happening, a la Alan Capro, I hadn't met him then. And we had a huge thing on issues that uh, our group catharsis was mixing art and craft, Western with Eastern, urban with rural, the Margi Pushti with the Deshi, classical with popular, simply because all these existed in a contemporary India with an easy reach then. Pupul Jaikar encouraged me to stretch the canvas wherever and whenever I could to make a, a force of habit of it. Large canvases and big brushes dripping with pigment had my fingers itching to move. Um, in college, a, la a bash at public art in the courtyard of Lalit Kala Academy, doing action painting with MF Hussain's son, Shamshad Hussain, left me resonant, stroke by note. We were responding to music played by someone whose names I cannot remember. But this transdisciplinary discourse was much more natural than it is actually today. And Shamshad's Abba, M.F. Hussain, and me understood being dramebas more than any artist. Um, there were many stories. And this is, of course, when I took his whole Ramayan series, I think it was 1960, no, 76, uh, which before they became um, the subject of much controversy. And I was the one who made Hussein paint in front of people. So he kept accusing me of making him into a performing artist. But he did that with great relish, and the drama bars in each of us follows. But I remember this thing in Hyderabad particularly because I took all his paintings into a village, carried them on bullock carts, and organized an entire stage where the Burra Katha, the Yakshagana, the Tola Bhumalatta, all the forms could interact with the earliest memories that might have inspired Hussein. I found these also last night, looking at the net from a film that we had made in 67. Abhi sab chize bhool jati hai, phir 
इंटरनेट के जरिए कुछ ना कुछ मिल जाता है ऑफन आई वुड बी फाउंड कंजरिंग प्रोजेक्ट्स इन स्पेस एंड मीडिया चूजिंग हम सफर्स विद वेरीड बैकग्राउंड एंड वोकेबलरीज द पार ऑफ कंडक्टिंग हैपनिंग्स दैट हैडेंट हैपन वुड मेक अस इन्वेंट इम्पॉसिबल ब्रीफ्स we would juxtapose divergent disciplines provocative percussion pulling out conflicts when none existed become it sort of all these conflicts became essential so i hear talk about people who i worked with or admired there's john cage there's namjoon pike there's mers cunningham who also came to india and worked with me at shadipur depot for a week then there was john uh, and he was all who never came but i had again time to spend with him in america so unscripted jugal bandis nearly uh, uh held the better part of my imagination the expected unexpected had me hooked for many years even later when i started to work with crafts people and performers as an enthusiastic entrepreneur of the emerging needs and here kamla devi chatopadhyay was instrumental in bringing me back really home i went because of pupul jaiko to paris to study but i really came back to be with her to go around with her in the country and i recall going into a, a jungle in uh, well i had come down to make a festival of india for this man i was working for in paris called pierre casa whose picture you may see there and i came looking for there's a picture of me then and a picture of me lately with him he's he's still 93 he's still going well so i went down to Uh, to where a sort of very BBC audience was gathered, and they showed me one show after the show uh, for a munch for this big festival of India that was going to be put up in in Paris in 1971. This is long before the festivals of India that came in 82 and 83, and uh, I was just not. I, it's like me going and seeing festivals. in pseniums and didn't say anything so i got all of them to come and kamla devi ji encouraged that that without their makeup without their uh, paraphernalia and their excess baggage and come and just sing and dance and then you really saw things happening the muslims the hindus the tribals the the, the scheduled castes the whatever they were all they began to find rhythms play with each other dance with each other to me that set was the sense of what contemporary india is all about and i think that contemporaneity i owe to kamla devi chatopadhyay now what moved me beyond words was the magic of anonymous synchronicity in group efforts the tension of the unknown the chance of accidental innovation the empowerment of the vulnerable and the confidence building for the tentative uh um, work with my hands however started to shrink even as making models and sketches uh, ideas to convey diverse directions for my design practice became functional necessity the process of making doing and becoming was never ending and non linear so good theater was for me like watching the great 800 kg of charaku being made i bought them here in the craft museum and it was astounding to see the musari sit as a conductor and watch about 50 bay a bay body people make this 800 kg molten metal to see when to pour it in when it's the color of the neck of the peacock how somebody picking up shards from the floor so that they would not be stepped on by 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 feet that had no shoes it was somebody pouring water to keep people cool it was like an orchestra so well conducted without any real conductor the musari would just sit there i think that teamwork was something that required a, a lot of thinking i used to say that to my friend zubin mehta that you know never understood the exile position held by a conductor who who sort of deconstructing western orchestra what did he do after all such effective drama with a mere flick of a wrist a nod of the hand and an overt expression on the face well zubin mehta who brought a small group of musicians to play at the opening of one of my exhibitions called the golden eye which you see here in new york uh, once told me that constant rehearsals and intense homework alone can show up 
in that inspired moment of showmanship. So spontaneity also had to be in had to be felt from somewhere else and realized. My own sense of confidence in drama came with the act of consistent improvisation and unscripted co-creation. Becoming a mere curator was too passive. And to be known as an impresario, positively unattractive. Uh, so soon one was dismissed by the art fraternity as a, a drame bars designer and accused by the world of theater as a mere aesthete. Now, I won't argue either, because I quite accept. I feel proud to have pioneered some of the world's legendary masters of theater in the last century. Joan Littlewood on film and events, as artistic advisor to Peter Brook for the Mahabharat, and as a longtime friend of Aryan Mushkin at the Edhkhatiya du Soleil in Paris, creating and even directing a play later for her. So first, Joan Littlewood, extraordinary. When she first came to India, these are such long stories, and I must keep an eye on time. I my, my watch. I don't to forget. In, in, in India, we think having no sense of time is a virtue. So, but one must keep in mind, OK. So uh, Joan Littlewood, I'll cut the stories, but we did a film called Bijou that never got shown, and how it got made and why it didn't get shown is another story. But uh, uh, she had, she was the one who really, I think, was irreverent, completely the theater workshop was her creation. It was not just about doing plays. It was a design for living. And theater was for her, after she did the most successful things, like, oh, what a lovely war, et cetera, was like whoring in the West, in the West End or at the Broadway. She sort of dismissed it. So here is an earlier poster of hers at the, real, at the Theatre Royal. And then when it was bought off by Richard Attenborough, which is where she thinks the whoring began, <laughs> it became into another into yet another manifestation. So the Fun Palace was my, I mean, I, I was all of eight, 19 or 20, and it went on the relationship to about 30. But the Fun Palace, till she died, the Fun Palace with the architect Cedric Price was my idea, ideal space for theater. Her idea for a place where work and play, combined learning and creativity were linked. The talent in each individual could be released with community-based theater. Groups could find a voice like no other to be heard and to understand each other. So one of my greatest achievements, in fact, was putting Joan Littlewood on the same couch as Peter Brook at Joan's house. And I was working with Peter then in Paris, and Joan was in France, so I called him to have a look at what we were doing with my boule de seca la carpeche. I will show you about a little later. But Mahabharat in Paris in 1984, and then later on as it developed into a film. Now, I also took Joan to see Ariane Mushkin at the Théâtre du Soleil, Paris for the first time. Now, watching these geniuses looking at each other was a learning experience and maybe subject of another talk. Uh, now, India, mother, daughter, father, son. Later, I directed the play. Uh, on, um, on an idea of Aryan to bridge the gap between the folk and the classical traditions of India through their fragile traditions of transmission. Its actors, a somewhat eclectic troupe of folk musicians, classical dancers, jugglers, acrobats, mystics, and ritual performers from different regions of India, helped me understand this sort of unlettered language of traditional performer and where it fits into this obsession for what is contemporary. It was first performed in 1993 at the La Cartouche at Vincennes in Paris, where it attracted large audiences and received considerable charm. And indeed, on the night of the last public performance in India, it was questionable who outnumbered whom, the audience or the actors. Uh, Habib Tanvir, a great, huge uh, influence. We met when I was 12, but I never forgot that he gave me a chance to cast myself in the image of a hero I could never become, even at 18. 
he cast me as Lord Darlington and Lady Windermere's fan at Lady Irvin College. But much later, all these institutions are literally 100 yards from, from here. So this is like a mother goddess with a, uh, could have a very incestuous relationship that could strangle anybody with its umbilical cord. Uh, 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 and, and then, and, but what was, what was wonderful was that he then later on, you could see him, he's the one colored pink in the center. And we all these dandies around our kids from St. Stephen's College who were trying to make their way to meet the girls in Miranda. Theater was a very important social meeting, not as vital as it is for hundreds of people who come to this institution to grow up into becoming real uh, carriers of tradition, of uh, repositories of our memory in the way that few institutions have been able to do. I don't have to go. Of course, then later on, he did the Mircha Katika and he, I'll never forget the work we did with, the sh at, uh, with her. I also acted in his Sanskrit plays, but they, was, they were in English then, I think. And the, the work of the, the uh, uh, sorry, did I, was I showing that before? I don't know. But anyway, so uh, Fida and Tijan Bai and all came into our lives, and the sound of sitting in those workshops in Raipur, where conferences like this, where not a word was spoken, no papers were given, of course, but everybody sang and everybody stand around and had sh no, nothing was shared without a song. And I think that is what was wonderful. I do remember him going with me to my village projects in Rotak. This is where he wrote something quite seminal. You won't read it because it's only half. But he did his uh, thing on, uh, on untouchability with my shoemakers. And then uh, for, for Shahi Lakarhara and for Chalandas Chor, we invent, that was my sketch for the set that I made, which could become, make the song more useful. So one could uh, make the actors go into pits and have a theater on top and to be able to go around. All, you could do all this actually, doing it on a bullock cart in the middle of a village square. So in fact, the nicest thing that, a learning that came to me was, uh, while he indulged me with his fantasy uh, uh, to make this kind of a canopy, I would remember that uh, uh, at the workshop which we were having, I was put in my place by a jogi, Haryanvi Jogu, who said the village Chopal was an ideal theater anyway, with its limited space. Uh, parked bullock carts, platforms, uh, dhoris and chajas, roofs and trees, leaving people to choose their own preferred place to sit or stand, s suiting their own senses. Kuch log roop must hote hain, kuch raag must hote hain, kuch taal must hote hain, or kuch must must hote hain. So why does design want to give everything to everyone. And this is a question that I was always sharing in this institution with the venerable Al El, Al El, El, because we used to Al Kazi Ji and Shanta, who was truly like a, a, a dost, a real friend, and Habib. Uh, it's another matter that I don't think they got along with each other at all again. And there was a huge tension, but that's again stories for somewhere, some other time. And I, I, be happy to, at a more informal level to share some of these. So, Jaraha for the Bhule Bisri Kalakar was my way of understanding what my role in this field of crafts on traditional performance and where I fit into my own, what is my, what is my equation with the society I live in? Now, very quickly, I will take you, this is about survival. India's arts in the dust heap of a not so smart city. Let's begin with a true story. Emergency had been declared more than four decades ago. All too silently, bulldozers had raised the mud houses at Katputli colony, traditional artists squatting on public land in Shadipur depot, in the heart of India's capital city. Rem removing the poor was easier than removing poverty. In those troubled times, the Bhule Bistre Kalakar Sekari Siviti, India's first cooperative of the forgotten and scattered artists, was formed. 
That was our first workshop that Pupul Jaik. Kamla Devi Chattopadhyay, Pupul Jaik and Ila Bhatt were guiding me to establish a unique arts habitat for the skilled poor. As street entertainers, the Bastiwalas were vulnerable, but tenacious. These resilient pilgrims of joy included puppeteers, acrobats, jugglers, magicians, balladeers, animal trainers, and craftspeople. The tourists called their live neighborhood Anandgram, the village of eternal bliss, in the midst of a bludgeoning city. 35 years ago, look at this barefoot architecture, residents making their dream homes in every courtyard. So basti basna khel nahi hai, baste baste basti hai. A community settlement is not mere play, while settling and settling, it settles. The second bulldozing happened a year later during the regime of the Janta Party. <coughs> Cut to Delhi, 2017, only two years ago. The artists faced the third demolition, riot police with noisy bulldozers. 3,500 homes destroyed. Here's the deal. Artists squatting on public land for 35 years, a kachi basti in five, two hectares of prized land with a metro station. Is that, does that sound practical? A private retailer making a great real estate steal with the government. The deal is done for a ridiculous price of 6.11 crores by the past government. Duple department and mall have started to come up ostensibly to pay for 10, 15 storied vertical slums housing the poor that are right now being put into, uh, into transit camps. So no sight yet of the promised institute development for the poor. 35 years ago, a veteran cartoonist, Mr. Idhar, made this prophetic cartoon for me to express the plight of the residents of Katputli colony. That's exactly what has happened today. Of course, I did editorials which spoke about the scandal, but again, we fail. And why we fail is the subject of the
grandson and four other families sharing a kitchen in the courtyard. Hazra Begum, study embroideries for floor coverings for palaces, lived here with her family of eight, three members, three um, cats and a fat goat. Um, this is Gopal Viva from Jinnal Patti. These are photographs I took about 30 years ago. Uh, General Patti, Tamil Nadu, now selling balloons in Delhi, living in a slum with his mother, Uttamma, and wife, Radha, working as housemaids. Here, holding the last sari they wove in their village. This typical family of traditional artists and performers struggle to find patrons, tourists, and prospective buyers do not know where to find them. How can the most generation of artists take pride in their parents' occupation? The school-going young today have no access to what's taught for thousands of years. These people I trace here when I, I go back to their homes where they lived, whether it's General Patti in Tamil Nadu, see where they left from and where they're living now in the city slums. So it's, it's uh, many stories get merged here, but craftspeople, classical musicians, weavers, all their various problems and we were trying to set them up as cooperatives as uh, with the Asian Heritage Foundation. We've organized four separate letters that went to the two prime ministers, but of course nothing happened. Everybody who is anybody in this field was part of this idea to be able to give, um, to, to make the hypocrisy less of celebrating their arts, but not being able to meet their needs as people. And so these were submitted to the prime minister, but of course nothing has happened. Civilization and culture must go hand in hand. The nation is poorer for not recognizing, sorry, for not recognizing its, uh, its inherent capital. The art will survive only as long as the artist can. Bharathari, in his evocative verse written in 5th century AD, classified a person devoid of literature, music, and the art as equivalent to an animal. However, it's said that even cows give more milk to the sound of music. So Gio Janoon presents the folk artists, craftspeople, weavers, and classical musicians singing together for the first time. I don't have the time to say, play you that song, but Atna Utsav came largely, in my opinion, for three issues. That was, I think, was the far sight of a, a, a prime minister who also was a pilot from the look above, integrating mehikmas that, you know, he asked me, what would be the, uh, where would we go if you talk about food or clothing or if it's performance, well, there's different, different departments of the government and one may not see eye to eye with the other or they would duplicate. And sometimes the person himself, like a bhopa, he would be a performer, but he'd also paint. So when he paints, he's under the department of textile. When he performs, he's under the department of culture. So these issues, this idea of zonal cultural centers of integrating the Mahatmas and of making it interstate. So Bundelkhand could be a member of two, three zones. That's thinking way beyond political boundaries. And then high density dissemination, not going to the same air condition, not to the incestuous um, privilege of Monday House, but I mean the, all the air condition, all the, where theater is, but theater where people don't have any access to go there and with, with, with more than just festivals. So, so the Apna Utsav really came as an idea to repeat every year where people could be, uh, and I did the closing day and the uh, opening day, but there were some wonderful festivals here, like animating all the monuments called Gunse Patar, where they stay. So don't get into a proscenium, go out where the context is rich, immediate, and uh, throbbing with artistry. Then there was the cast baths, took great musicians, Babim Shan Josi, Jasraj, Ravi Shankar, everybody was there. I put them in tents at, at the music bag, then there were dancers at the Nitya bag, then there was the Natya bag, which was in Bhuli Bhatiari, I think. And so like that, there were these cast bags for, and they were all divisions of how seven zones could reach out to 108. <laughs> Diversity, connectivity, empowerment. <laughs>
देवता आत्म हाथ करेंगे रोएंगे गाएंगे आगमित करने का कला संस्कृति के माध्यम से संवाद के माध्यम से साझा सफर ये हम सब का मिला जुला सफर सबके लिए खुला मंच है
in Vermont. fast 
artificial intelligence, emotional intelligence, the, the emotional retina, slow food, slow travel, slow fashion, Zindabad. I will end, as always, with my plea to, uh, for the local. Um, uh, with this, on facing cultural activism in our world, throwing light in the search for the contemporary, in the intangible idiom of indigenous wisdom. I call it look within. And let me tell you about the dilemma of the kasturi mrik, or a musk deer, searching frantically from forest to forest for the fragrance that in fact lies within its own womb. Kasturi kundali base, mrik dhunde panmahi. So my friends, we all sit thirsty beside the river. We sit hungry under a tree laden with fruit. We clinch potent seeds in a fist, scared of dropping them till we find new ones. No seed is shy of germination, nor does any fruit remain on the tree when ripe. And when it falls on a fertile ground, it does not rot. Many thanks. Thank you. My, my son tells me the first time I've finished before time. Fantastic, which probably means any burning question I'd be very happy to answer. I think can we just have just a hard line? We've got five minutes. Seven minutes is what I was two. I was one hour, so this seven minutes. Am I correct, Shantanu? Yes. Can we have one or two questions? Just to get a sense. Please. It's perfectly all right there, Nand. Maybe please. I have one question. And uh, Lights. It, Lights. It may not be a, it may be a difficult question to ask. Light. Um, uh, all these 70s and 80s and your contribution to the uh, Festival of India, uh, by a section of philosophers it has been seen as uh, representing poverty and exoticizing India. It has again and again came to a certain kind of observation that uh, our the India is being represented as the country of poor and indigenous and the contemporary urban India is somehow being missed in the uh, uh, representation or, uh, of our country. Uh, we grew up with this argument and uh, I'm sorry I'm being too courageous to ask you this question in a public forum. Must. Uh, but uh, I, I always wanted to uh, discuss or uh, ask you this, how do you feel about this argument or this observation? Uh, uh, Shantanu, you know well, and you know better than any in your generation, that there's a paradox between poverty and culture. The, actually, you really, actually Habib used to say this all the time, you're really more cultured if you're poor, and something happens to you with acquisitions and you lose out on things that are very basic. Now, I can argue because I do contemporary architecture, I do interiors, I do a lot of things that to do with contemporary theater, but um, I get bored with what is, um, which is even a little spell of derivation, derivative. I get very bored when I'm not in the presence of something terribly original, something that immediately makes you feel this is real, this is it's as real as real can be. Now, everybody has their own reality, and everybody comes from that, and it may be influenced by many things that they may or may not be conscious of. So that is valid, whatever they're doing, even if it is derivative, because they don't know. It doesn't interest me. So, in terms of exotica, I can't help it if the, if the people who are the most vital and, and uh, vibrant happen to be materially poor. They, it's just, 
you know, it just so happens that India is, uh, Gandhiji used to say that, it's in its villages. Increasingly, we don't see that now. We don't say that too. We say that India is now like Shanghai or Dubai, and we can be anywhere. Yes, of course, and I, I'm all with that India. But if you ask me that question personally, what is it that makes the sap in me rise? What makes me feel um, real or whole? Then I, it's an India that uh, um, I think we have marginalized, and we have not really given it the time of day. It's like a gem in the, in the dust. You just have to spot it and then hold it to the light and something else happens. So. <laughs> okay. Uh, may I ask the question? Yeah. Hi. Yeah. Uh, in the beginning you mentioned that uh, doing festivals, only theatre festival is not enough. Yeah. Um, and we just saw whatever uh, short films uh, and the snippets and whatever you spoke about, um, the allied arts and the artists and the artist village, etc. So what is the way forward? Uh, if it is not a festival only for the theatre, then what do you look at, what should be done? Apart do you, from uh, do you want, If you want a, a partly irreverent reply, which is always worthwhile. I think irreverent is always best. Okay, then, then you know, I think that since last 50 years I've said this concept of national school of drama is outdated. It really requires, uh, we've got to look at creative ecologies. It's like economists speaking about, uh, uh, about, the, about the economy as, um, they're talking about e economic, e economic regeneration it, and never uttering the word culture. So today the world is talking about creative industries creative and cultural industries, in fact. And all the silos are, are disappearing. So you need a center of creativity, where the creative sh spaces are not allowed to be shrunk, where there's great uh, movement between forms of discipline, which have got straight jacketed with a colonial excess baggage of 200 years. We need to re-examine some of those. So this was the kind of dialogue we had even then with Chanta Gandhi when we were doing Babais and with Al Qazi, who came from another background. Now both are vital. Nobody is saying this is important, this is not so important. But if you just start looking at this and forgetting something else, then you are poorer. So I think you have to find a way to say what, what do we need in terms of creativity? What are creative enterprises? You have to re-energize the creative community, which is all of you, to say that, uh, I mean, look at all the students of theater here. How many times do they go across to Lalit Kala Academy and meet painters? Or do you go a little further to the architecture college? I doubt it. You know, I remember Amal al we did that Kathy Colwitz thing on, the, on a hot, hot mixed plant long, long ago. That was about 50 years ago. But I, I'm just thinking that, you know, this cross transdisciplinary thing, which, as I said, Vishnu Dharmotra Puran, Puran mentions so well, to be an architect, you have to be a dancer. All these things get linked. Where? Where are we doing it? So pedagogy is at the bottom of it. And pedagogy, oh, this is pedagogy. But you added a very muscular side to it by bringing uh, outreach by creating a repertory, by going out, but uh, let's have more. Can I? Uh, I have a, I have, I want to bring it back to the discussion of the big and the small. Uh, the festival is the big. The performance is the is, small. Is there any reason why we can't have the whole lights on? I mean, this is perfectly relevant. Okay, sorry, I, I'm just trying to see you. Yeah. Uh, okay. You know, the festival is the big and uh, the performance is the small. So how do you handle the big and the small? You're so much for the small, but you're always big. Is it the problem of getting into aesthetics and not beyond aesthetics? That's a very layered question and a very, 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 it's not going to get an answer in one minute. 
But each thing has its carries, this, each kernel carries its own drama bars, its own requirement. There are certain things that the spatial equation of that would change completely if you were to put it out of context. So I think uh, there are theaters that are made for the proscenium. I would love to see a, a you know, uh, um, I'm becoming so geriatric. My friend from Manipur. Um, Ratham. Ratham couldn't be with all his lights and his, you couldn't put him up in a, in a chopal and, you know, maybe he could do something different. But so each has its own, so maybe you also need to be uh, doing something less, um, less programmed as a festival, so to which all of us can go or all our friends can go and let it happen with a different context in different areas. No, but what the I'm scale is different. It's a very layered question. I don't want to dismiss it. It's very important what you're saying. But I think it requires um, a more s subjective discussion. You have to point to me a performance or a piece or an endeavor which then requires its own sonography where to put it, how to put it, how no, to No, I'm, I'm only saying that maybe it will take you beyond the small into the actual culture if you really are caring for the small. Uh, there's nothing small or big. Yat pinde, tat brahmande. In the microcosm is the macrocosm. There is nothing small or big. You can make the biggest thing very small, you can make the smallest thing very big. It's entirely all about, let's not talk in terms of theories or what I'm even extrapolating. I think you need to be specific. If we had an idea, you as a theater people have an idea that you want to put out, let's discuss it and let's take it to the next stage or the stage it can go. And then if you're not happy with that stage, let's reinvent it to go to stages where it must go. So I think it's, it's very difficult to, to to find a general rule. In any way, I'm against rules. No rules. I think. Thank you ever so much for everything. I really, really welcome this opportunity. I have to thank Suresh Ji uh, uh, for the last 45 years that I've been in, in this city. It is the first time I've had the opportunity to come and speak to the NSD. It's a place that I really value, I hold with great reverence. Much of my learning curve has happened, not in this canvas, but it was nearby at that time, and then a little bit happened even here. But I thank you for giving me this very prestigious uh, platform to be able to share some thoughts, a journey for so, for so long. Thank you.